is setting up the meeting. I'll tell you when it says we're live, unless you're, <clears throat> if you're on Facebook. All right, so, so we're live, Mike. Um, so uh, a little bit, if you don't know, obviously you do know what's going on right now with, with COVID-19 and, um, and what's going on there. And obviously it's, uh, it's the talk of the nation. Well, I'm here with one of my really good friends, uh, Michael Schaffner, who um, unfortunately had to fight this battle. And uh, thank God uh, he's, we're blessed to have him here to kind of tell us what it was like to, to go through this. And um, man, I guess take it from take it from there, Mike. I mean, tell us uh, what was it like. I'm glad you're okay. I'm glad that uh, that you're with us. And um, thanks, Dan. Yeah. So the first day of spring break, I, I took my wife and kids to Cocoa Beach, uh, and it was packed. The beach was packed. And uh, a few days later. I, uh, I came down with uh, flu-like symptoms, and that lasted 14 straight days. The worst part was the fever. It wasn't a very high fever. It was like 101, uh, 0.5, but it was constant every single day, every hour, every minute of the day. Oh. And uh, after three or four or five days of that, it starts to play mind tricks on you. You start to see things that, that are not really there. <laughs> because of the fever and, and after about four after about the fifth or sixth gate day i knew it wasn't the the regular flu so actually I, I mustered up the energy to drive around and try to find one of those drive-through uh, testing sites uh and everybody told me we can't oh we're, we're not high risk we're saving the tests for uh, high risk patients you know oh. so I, I i get home and i'm I'm breathing like I just ran a marathon. You know, that, that, that's how much it took, took out of me to, to walk to the car and drive around. You know, yeah, it really and this felt is like coming, it. And this is coming from somebody that was an MMA fighter, kept himself in very good shape, takes vitamins, still out of breath. It's kicking your butt. Right. I mean, it, it felt like, I, I don't know if it was the breathing or the fatigue, because the, the fatigue just kicked my butt since the moment it hit me. And I just didn't want to get out of bed because of the fatigue and the body aches. So I think it was that more than the breathing. I, I, I fortunately didn't have uh, issues with, with, with breathing. I was doing a lot of breathing exercises uh, just because I was paranoid that I'd get uh, pneumonia. So I'd sit up, I forced myself to sit up and I'd take these deep breaths in and out, just fill my lungs in and out. And number one, I was checking to see if it actually hurt me because uh, if, it, if it felt like glass, I was gonna go straight to the hospital. Felt like glass in my lungs. I was going to go straight to the hospital, but fortunately, I, I didn't have that feeling. So I just kept practicing my deep breathing uh, during those two weeks, just because I was paranoid that I'd, I'd get pneumonia. Uh, but uh, I, I found it crazy that nobody wanted to test me. They, they they turned me away at a few locations because I wasn't high risk. I wasn't elderly. I wasn't a healthcare worker, etc. You know, they, and it was because of a lack of tests test kits. And so I, I, run a company, yeah, I run a company called Rafa Pharmaceuticals. And I remembered that uh, in late December, uh, a South Korean manufacturer was offering to make me uh, COVID-19 rapid tests. Okay. So I could, you know, well, so I could get it paid to be in your business, huh? So I could get, so I could get FDA approval, which, you know, uh, it, it is right now is, is a fast process, thank God. Uh, and so I remembered, so I, I, I get the guy on the phone and say, Hey, overnight me a sample of your COVID 19 test, right? <laughs> the, one, the one you're offering to make me. And so I, I get it, uh, DHL took two days, I get it, and I, and I it, it has 97% accuracy, it's pretty darn good, and it came out positive. I, I didn't need I didn't need those testing, and it only took 15 minutes to get the results. Wow, awesome! So, you know, I didn't need a waiting line in the uh, CDC. I mean, not not uh, awesome that you not awesome that <laughs> you were positive, but awesome that you had the ability to reach out to somebody to get that test. Right. 
I, I was so out of it that I just completely forgot that, that, you know, this was offered to me, you know? So when I, when I tested positive on the, on the test, on the, on the rapid uh, test kit, uh, I it already just confirmed what I already knew. I didn't need a test to tell me, you know, but I just wanted, I wanted to know for the sake of the people around me. Yeah. Keep, uh, I mean, for anybody who don't, he has two kids and a wife and they're in the house and right. obviously being on lockdown, you've got to think about them as well. Yeah. So at the testing sites, they just told me, Oh, you've come in contact with people that tested positive. Just assume you have it and stay home and, and treat it, treat it like the flu. That's literally, literally what they told me. Okay. And I understand they don't want to flood the, the ERs and the hospitals with people with uh, quote unquote mild symptoms. Cause uh, I'm assuming I had mild sim symptoms because I didn't need a ventilator. Thank God. Yeah, it's a good thing that you didn't need so, that. Uh, about day seven into it or eight, I I got a telemedicine appointment at doctor says doc come on. It's thirty five dollars. The doctor called me on the phone. It was very thorough. Spent like thirty minutes with me, and he prescribed hydroxychloroquine which is the malaria medication that Trump mentioned in one of his press conferences. He prescribed azithromycin and I was trying to get him to prescribe oxygen for me just in case yeah. because I could, I could get my hands on, on an oxygenator. I just need a prescription for the oxygen and he wouldn't do it, but he did prescribe for me a nebulizer with uh, albuterol as a, uh, Albuterol, for those that don't know, is, is an asthma medication. It opens up the lungs. And so he prescribed that. And my wife went and went to Walmart to, Walmart to pick up the prescription the next day. And the pharmacist sees the, the prescription and his eyes open up. And he freaks <laughs> out and tells my wife, you know what? Go wait in the car. We'll bring it out to you. We, we don't want you in the store. <laughs> wow. So it's come to that. Yeah. You know, and she was, you know. She was, I was quarantined in my bedroom. I was away from my kids for two weeks. I mean, and she, she disinfected the whole house. I mean, every inch. So it was really no, no reason to think that I infected, you know, her or the kids. But I could understand why the pharmacist uh, freaked out, you know, especially yeah. after seeing that, that listen, combination of drugs. We get a package at the door. My wife waits 24 hours. Then she goes outside with gloves and Clorox and she wipes it all out. Leaves the box out there. I mean, I guess this is just what we're dealing with. Yeah, that's what my wife does. You know, we get a package. She doesn't wait 24 hours. She brings it in and just sanitizes uh, the outer box, the inner box. And if you can, the actual item, like the bottle or, or whatever, or, the, or whatever item we received in the mail or through Amazon. Yeah, better safe than, I mean, especially being firsthand watching someone fight it. So, so from there, you got the chloroquine, right? Is that what it's called? And you got hydroxychloroquine. It's a yeah. it's malaria medication. And the the doctor on doc on the telemedicine doctor, which was great by the way, and I, I you know I want to promote his their website because we need more telemedicine now. It's doctor. Yeah, when we get off, put any any information that you think would benefit people. Just put it right in the comments. Share it. Yeah, feel free. Yeah. So he he. he he basically prescribed that as a prophylactic, just in case. And he said, look, only take the hydroxychloroquine if you think it's going to save your life because the side effects are horrendous. And I really, you know, I'm in the pharmaceutical business. I know all about adverse okay. effects. I know about safety data reporting and so forth. And I really couldn't find any, any harsh um, side effects reported with this malaria drug. I really didn't know what he was talking about. And the pharmacist told my, my wife the same thing. He says, this, is, this has horrendous side effects. You know, you need to be very careful and only take it if you have to. But I really, I can, I, based on my research, my access with the FDA and, and information that's reported to the FDA, I can find any uh, adverse effects. That doesn't mean that there isn't any out there, but I couldn't find any. And hydroxychloroquine has been around for, you know, 60 years. 55 years and they give it to people uh, as a prophylactic when they travel to high risk countries in, in Africa that are suffering from it that have a higher chance of getting malaria. So it, 
if they give it to them for preventative measures, just for traveling over there, it can't be too bad. You know, <laughs> but I, didn't, I, I didn't take it. I put it in the, in the medicine cabinet and I said, uh, I'll take it if I need it, God forbid. You know, yeah, I did take me, right? What's that? If you're down to one knee or something, right? Exactly right. If I'm if, I, if I'm on, if I'm getting a standing eight count, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> then I'll take it. But uh, I, I did take the azithromycin. I don't know if it helped. I, I did just, just in case I had any secondary infections because the virus can, can cause secondary infections, not just pneumonia. So I took the azithromycin just in case. Uh, it's a, a Z pack. It's three pills. Of, uh, five pills, actually. Yeah. I took. I went through that course. I didn't have to take the nebulizer with the uh, buterol. I didn't have to do that because I, I think I was I was I was doing my breathing exercises every every day. Every few hours, I I spend five minutes just breathing deeply. And I think that helped avoid having to take the albuterol and the nebulizer. Yeah. So obviously, your background in sports, athletics, pharmaceutical drugs, just all that stuff had to come into play to help you be able to battle this. Cause obviously, I, I mean, I, not obvious, but I, I haven't fought it, but from what, what they say is your lungs tend to fill up and that's what people are, how people are losing the battle is their lungs get to a point where they can't breathe anymore. Right. Exactly. It, 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 that did not happen to me. And it doesn't happen to a lot of people. Most people will get mild symptoms like the way I did, which is just fever and body aches, but the fever lasts a long time. And I didn't take any, I took Tylenol uh, for two nights in a row because I couldn't take it anymore. Um, so I could reduce the fever and I could be able to sleep well. But other than that, I didn't, I didn't take any, any medications. Uh, I took a lot of vitamins. I took a lot of, I took like 2,000 milligrams, or two grams rather, of vitamin C. I took, uh, well, I, I'm, I'm glad that, uh, I'm glad you're up and running. So a couple things, <clears throat> you obviously you, you look, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm so sorry. You look like you've lost some weight, so I'm sure it's knocked some pounds off you. And then what would you tell somebody right now as far as preventative maintenance? I mean, what do you think people can do to try to protect themselves from having to experience what you went through? Well, I, it's funny you mentioned I look thinner. I did. I lost. I lost 15 pounds, and it happened in, in a matter of days. Uh, and, and not was, the diet of choice. No, and and, and unfortunately, what it was, it wasn't 15 pounds of fat. It was 15 pounds of muscle. I'm I'm kind of scrawny right now. I know Dan. You know me in person. And you see me. I'm <laughs> a bigger guy, but I'm kind yeah, of yeah. scrawny right now. My shirt's big. I lost you look pounds. like Alex. Yeah, exactly. You'll see. <laughs> uh, but he's ripped. I'm not. <laughs> But uh, I, I lost 15 pounds just from the profuse sweating. I mean, it was uh, a breakout in these sweats and it wouldn't stop for hours. I would sweat for two, three hours at a time, just sweating as if I was in a sauna. And I was just soaked. My shirt was soaked. I had to change a few times just from the profuse sweating. But wow. to answer your question on, on what I think you know, people can do to boost their immune system is uh, when all this started happening in China, I, I told my wife, I said, it's only a matter of time before it gets over here. Right. So, so, so you had being the business you're in, you knew what was going on before what was going on. Right. I mean, just uh, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to, you know, to know that this is airborne and it's contagious. It, it's it's extremely difficult to control. Uh, so I put my family on on a preventative measure. Uh, protocol of vitamins. We took like 10 different vitamins, even before the virus got to the US, just to boost our immune system. We took vitamin C, we took vitamin D with K3. I mean, we took a, a mushroom complex for immunity. We took a, a product called Dermatropin. It's a, a microdose, homeopathic microdose of HGH. It, you just rub it into your skin and, and it gets absorbed uh, transdermally. Uh, and all this is stuff that obviously you can post the information below when we get off. And also this is stuff that you believe only allowed you to get mild symptoms and not kind of the full blown experience. I think it helped. Uh, it also helped. It was a combination of things. I can't just point it to one thing. 
Uh, but I think it definitely helps. Uh, I started taking, we started taking these supplements and vitamins, you know, 30 days before it actually hit the US. We're just boosting our immune system. And I mean, it helped that, you know, I'm, I'm a relatively healthy guy. I don't have any uh, underlying health conditions. I don't take any prescription medications. I think that helped tremendously. Uh, I think it helped that I was, you know, physically active. But I could see how somebody with underlying medical conditions can, can really suffer if, if, if they're unlucky enough to get the, the virus. Yeah, and, so, and you have a lot of you have a lot of friends up in up in the Northeast, right? Up in New York, and I know with uh, in the in a lot of other businesses that you do. I know you deal with a lot of folks from up north. I, I deal with people from all over the place. Uh, you know, from from New York. You know, uh, Midwest. I mean, you really, I really, I, I'm pretty sure I got. I mean, I'm not sure where I got it, but uh, and I can't point it to one place. But I come in contact with a lot of people from a lot of different places, even internationally. And how are they doing? Have you heard of um, cases? Anybody else you know that might have has had to fight this or had it worse or mild? Or uh, I know I know a few people that uh, that tested positive. Some I had been in contact with, some I didn't. Uh, so it just just no way to know, you know, where I got it from. Sure. So what do you, um, and then just obviously a question, what do you say to people right now that don't want to stay in their house? They still want to go out and about. They still want to go to do business. They still want to go to stores. They, they think it can't happen to them. <clears throat> That's tricky, man, because I'm a libertarian. I like my freedom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah, but it got you. <laughs> it did. Sure yeah. did. And, and if I had to go through it again, I would, you know, sure. uh, I have antibodies in my body now. And so I'm going to call the Red Cross and ask them where I can donate blood because I'm, I'm O negative. It means I can donate to anybody. Thank God. So, you know, uh, so I'm glad I went through it because I was strong enough to, to survive it. Uh, but as far as going out, you know, just be careful. Wear a mask. You know, if you wear gloves, take them off immediately when you leave the grocery store and, and treat it like it's your own hands, you know, uh, if you're wearing gloves and dispose of the gloves properly. Go out, go out and exercise, you know, go for a run, go for a walk, get some sun, go out with your family, just keep a safe distance from people, you know, sure. at least a good eight feet from other people. Yeah. Hey, so um, first off, Great, glad you're back and well and doing all that. I know Thank that you. Um, <clears throat> away from pharmaceuticals, I know you've, you're a, you're a real estate investor. I know you have a lot of um, investments and you have a lot of partners down in, in the um, South America and down there and stuff. And uh, what do you, for those that are still in the wholesale business or in the investment business or on that side of real estate, what are you seeing as far as from local investors? Well, uh, I have a niche in the, in the real estate uh, market, and I do a lot of business with South, South Americans, and their fear has, has really kicked in in South America. Not only fear, but uh, recession. You know, stock markets crashed, in, in, you know, in, not only here, but in, in South America. Uh, I think from a real estate standpoint, I think uh, there's going to be opportunities for a lot of people uh, that find those opportunities because... Unfortunately, I hate to say it, but there's going to be a wave of foreclosures coming. You know, people were on, a lot of people were on the brink of foreclosure even before this all happened. You know, and I don't, the banks can only be so patient because um, they have investors that buy um, mortgage backed securities. Banks are only going to be so patient to work with the people that are behind their mortgages. So we're going to see a wave of foreclosures. So we're going to see, uh, a lot of foreclosure auctions, which is what I do. I buy, you know, houses on, on you know, on, 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 in auction and then, and then rehab them. But I think we're going to see a lot more inventory in the next couple months in, in, uh, in the auctions because of that. Yeah, awesome. Well, I'll have um, tomorrow, <clears throat> let me look here. Tomorrow at 11, I have Brian Joyce on with Joyce Reed Capital. So um, 
feel free nice. to come on over to him. He's got a big wholesale investment company locally. I'm sure you get his emails. So I'll, I'll have him on too. And uh, we'll get more into that side of the industry. But I, I appreciate you coming on, man. It's good to see you. Good to talk to you. <laughs> good to good to hear that uh, you made it through this. And uh, next time, let's let's talk real estate. We don't have to mess with this COVID. Yeah, hopefully COVID will just be an afterthought for everybody. Yeah, man, we get back into to moving some doors, right? Right, exactly. I hope next time we're talking, it'll be at a closing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, Mike, man, will you be safe? Tell your family, hey, tell Alex what's up. And uh, I see your wife. She's on social media all the time, sending out some good things, keeping everybody positive. So uh, she sent me the Maccabee Games link. So I'll probably go watch that a little bit. Nice. Make sure your boys are still wrestling. Now you got those mats in the garage. Yeah, yeah. Daniel's been out there. Um, one of the coaches have sent him some drills to do out there. So they're doing the best they can. They're adjusting. It's the, what is this, the second full week or third full week of, or the start of the third week of homeschooling, I think. Second or third week. So everybody's kind of adapting to the new way of life, you know? Yeah, I think uh, exactly. It's not opportunity for Zachary to get stronger wrestling with his brother so. yeah he's trying he gets out there you know he's more of an introvert so he kind of likes to be to his to his own or by himself but um Daniel's dragging him out there a bit making him doing some exercises making him get on the mat and do some drills so you know Good, that's important especially now uh, you know, is Alex is is Alex's judo coach doing some virtual stuff with him he isn't unfortunately they're old school you know yeah uh, but yeah, I, I try to wrestle with them. We don't have mats at home, but I try to wrestle with them whenever I can. You know, just yeah, well, the- now that you uh, now that you're back healthy, you can get back out there and mess around with them. Yeah, I look forward to it, man. All right, buddy, take it easy. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, man, thanks for talking about it. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Take care, guys.